Hello, my name is James Burton. I am the Chief Investment Officer at a company called CCLA Investment Management. and We manage money for charities, churches and local authorities. It varies hugely. I'm a generalist as a Chief Investment Officer, so I get out of bed at five o'clock. I'm in the office by quarter to seven and it's important that I catch the early news and the end of Asian trading before the start of what happens within the UK. There are many different types of fund managers, from quantitative, so people who like numbers, perhaps computer programmers, they don't need high emotional intelligence, but they do need to have an eye for detail. The other end of the game, there are people whose perspective on life is far more artistic, who are much more interested in selecting companies where they trust management, where they believe in products, and where they are more instinctive in the way they work. There is then a continuum of differences between those two extremes. You will only succeed if you really love and enjoy what you do, because it is hard work. So find out what you enjoy most, and then stick rigidly to a commitment to being the best you can. Different regulations pertain to different geographies and indeed to different asset classes. If you want to be a mainstream participant in, say, currencies, you don't need qualifications at all. If, however, you want to be a regulated fund manager, you may have to be accredited with the SEC in the States. Uh, there are accreditation agencies in each of the key jurisdictions. And this is going to be one of the very fascinating challenges for Brexit, of course, as to whether or not we will still passport skills into Europe and vice versa. I would say that mathematics is the Latin of the 21st century. Therefore, if you're a competent mathematician, many of the aspects of the financial services arena will be oh so much easier than if you do not uh, have a competency at maths. It is obvious to me that if you have a comfort and familiarity with economics, that is very helpful. And then thirdly, in order to have distance and perspective, I do think that history will be very helpful. There is no formal requirement in terms of A-levels or university degrees and indeed there is a very wide set of employment types and people. People come from universities having read degree courses that I've never heard of but bring deep competence and insight to the table. I see fund management increasingly competitive and global in nature and of course the fly in the ointment will be whether the rising tide of protectionism, the rollback of globalisation associated with Brexit and Trump leads to a dismantling of this premise that I have that we will be in a truly global environment.